The knife and scissor tools in Affinity Designer allow you to draw a freehand or straight cutting line through any of your open curves, vector shapes or artistic text layers. And it also lets you cut into any curve layer to create a break in that shape, allowing you to make further edits on the fly too. It's a really creative tool, so let's look into how it works with this design I have here. With this composition, I want to make my top text elements a little more dynamic, and I want to continue the design we've started with this section on the right here too. So the first thing we need to do is locate the knife tool from our tools panel, or with the keyboard shortcut K. With this tool enabled, we can then tap on the vector layer itself to select a particular object, and we can combine that with Shift to make multiple selections. If I select this top section of text, we can then take a look at the context toolbar to see the options we have available to us. The stabilizer is a huge plus with this tool, as it really helps you to create smooth cuts and slices. But for now, I'm going to keep it deselected and come back to it later on. As with this design, I need my lines to be perfectly straight when they're cutting through the lettering, so I'm going to use the keyboard modifiers we have to help me achieve this. By dragging and holding shift, we can keep our line to a 45 or 90 degree angle. However, as my lettering is quite specifically angled, I need to be a bit more precise with how we cut into it. So by holding control on the keyboard, this allows me to lock in my starting point and then move the mouse around to choose the angle and positioning of the rest of my cut line. Now I'll make my first cut and slice straight through all four of our letters. Notice that we started out with an editable text layer and then by creating our knife cut, our text is converted into curves and conveniently put into one single group layer. This is quite handy as it avoids us having to make these steps ourselves and helps us to keep our newly cut shapes nicely organised. Next, I'd like to select the lower part of the lettering, which I can easily do with the knife tool still enabled, and I can use Shift to select the new section of text. And now I'll slice through this section as well. And then I'll just switch over to the node tool to select the new sections I've made and group them together into three parts. And I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command G on Mac, Control G on Windows to group these together. As this will now allow me to go ahead and apply some layer effects to each group to help add some more depth to this top section. I'll do this by using the layer effects icon in the layers panel and I'll add a bit of outer shadow here and just adjust my settings accordingly too. Then once I'm happy with that I can use one of our new additions in version 2 and click and drag on the layer effects icon itself which will allow me to copy these same settings to each individual group below which is just another little improvement we've made to the layers panel and I'll just switch to the Move tool to make some minor adjustments to the positioning too. Now we're done with the top part of the design, I'm just going to quickly show you how we can take similar steps to create these shattered segments we have in the right part of the design too. And this time we'll make sure we enable the Stabilizer setting in the Context Toolbar. This has two different options as well. Personally, I prefer to use the Rope setting, as this gives you a predetermined stabilizer length. But you may prefer to use the Window option, which acts in more of an elasticated way which can be quite useful at times too. If you haven't used the stabilizer before, it's something you can also combine with any pencil or brush tool work, so it's really a useful addition in the apps. But with the new setting enabled, I can simply approach this letter here, and then drag in to make my first cut, and use the extra rope length we have to pull back and help us create this triangular shape. And I'll just do this a few more times to give you an idea of the effect we want to make. Then I'll use the move tool to go in and reposition these new segments, in the same way we have with the other shattered parts of the design. And just one last example here, if I now turn off the stabilizer and turn on the auto close option, we can very quickly create some new segments in the middle of our letter. I'll then switch to the move tool with V and use shift to multi-select my new shapes and then move them outside of our main letter just like we have with the rest of the design on the right hand side. So now if I switch over to this other design, I'll show you a quick example of how you might use the scissor function with this tool too. So I have this branding example, and all of these curve layers are still editable, and have yet to be expanded or flattened. So one thing we might do in this scenario, is with the knife tool selected, we can then hover over one of the lines, and we can then use the scissor icon to instantly cut this line down the middle and using this method has saved us a handful of steps we would usually have to take if we were just using the node tool and the context toolbar, which is a great bonus. So now I can press command on Mac, control on Windows, to access the node tool, and easily reposition both of these lines into a new part of the design. 
Then lastly, I just want to show you this final example using a similar process to our first section, but this time instead of cutting into one curve, I'm going to use the 17 ellipse layers I have here instead. So I'll enable the knife tool with the keyboard shortcut again, then with the stabilizer enabled, I'll click and drag to take a few chunks out of our vinyl design. And just like that, we've instantly sliced through all 17 of our layers and we're left with these new sections. So I'll use the move tool to reselect these and move them into my desired locations. Which just shows you how powerful this new feature is, especially when you're working with multiple layers like we are here. So that was a few examples of how you might use the knife and scissor tools in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.